right. Uh, well, everybody, I think we're I think we're going to get started. I'll just ask everybody to make sure that you keep a space along the sidewalk so that people can can get through. Um, and uh, I'm really looking forward to tonight's event, which is, of course, an unveiling of a plaque uh, to honor Roy Lichtenstein here on his former studio, which is now the Whitney Museum's Independent Study Program. Um, and of course, we are joined by uh, folks from the Whitney Museum, who you'll be hearing from shortly, uh, as well as Dorothy Lichtenstein from the Lichtenstein Foundation, who made this all possible. So this is really a particularly wonderful event occasion. So, um, First of all, before we uh, get into the plaque, I just want to say that this is our 23rd plaque that Village Preservation has unveiled in the neighborhood. Some of you I know have been to probably most, if not all, of those plaque unveilings. Others, this may be the first one. Those plaques have honored everyone from Jane Jacobs to James Baldwin, uh, Jean-Michel Basquiat and Lorraine Hansberry, Martha Graham, Frank O'Hara and Frank Stella, also uh, done in coordination with the Whitney, Allen Ginsberg, William S. Burroughs, and a whole host of other incredibly important transformative figures, as well as marking sites like the Fillmore East, the San Remo Cafe, Julius's Bar, and the former NAACP headquarters. Um, so this really is a wonderful and esteemed group of people and places that we are honored to be able to uh, celebrate. I want to say uh, thank you to Juan Rivero, who is Village Preservation's East Village and Special Projects Director, for Woo! putting this together, um, as, well, as well as everybody on the Village Preservation staff. Um, uh, particularly from the Whitney, I want to thank uh, Jane Cap Car uh, Carey and Angela Montefinisi, um, who we worked with to help put this together. And of course, everybody at the Whitney for, for making this possible. Um, a couple of words about Village Preservation and why we're here today and why we do this. Village Preservation works to document, celebrate, and protect the special architectural and cultural heritage of Greenwich Village, the East Village, and NoHo, utilizing everything from landmark protections to zoning changes, as well as a whole host of programs, events, and resources meant to celebrate the very special uh, history of our neighborhood and to engage the public around that rich, rich history. As an example, earlier today, we noted that this day is the 198th anniversary of the opening of the Erie Canal. Who, who here knew that? Okay. Um, the Erie Canal, and I mention this because it was an engineering marvel which changed the way goods were moved and helped make New York the economic capital of the United States and the world, and which profoundly shaped and changed our neighborhoods. That's part of the history that we work to recognize every day. But tomorrow is what would have been the 100th birthday of Roy Lichtenstein, a transformative artist who changed the way we saw and thought about the world. and who helped cement New York's status as the artistic and cultural capital of America and the world, which also profoundly shaped and changed our neighborhoods. And that's also a part of the history that we strive to recognize and celebrate as well. For those of us in these neighborhoods, we are very lucky to have a wealth of people, places, institutions, and events connected to our neighborhoods, which were responsible for profoundly changing the way we viewed the world and saw its possibilities. Usually expanding the boundaries of thought and of the people and subjects considered worthy of recognition and elevation. Roy Lichtenstein was certainly one of those people who through his painting and sculpture broke boundaries and shifted paradigms. And that's part of what we are here to mark and celebrate. Now, usually when we unveil a plaque, the main purpose is to highlight the individual or the place that made such a profound and important contribution to our history. And we are doing that today. But we also have a double celebration to undertake here today. 
we're not only able to honor and mark the incredible contributions of an individual and all that he did at this location, but to also celebrate the fact that Roy Lichtenstein's former studio has now been transformed to help cultivate and nurture new generations of artists. That, of course, is being done through the Whitney's Independent Study Program, and thanks to the gen generosity of the Lichtenfein Lichtenstein Foundation and Dorothy Lichtenstein. So we're going to hear a lot more about Roy, and I want to now uh, hand the microphone over to two people who are uniquely responsible for this happening today. Um, our first is Adam Weinberg, who has served as the Alice Pratt Brown Director of the Whitney Museum of American Art since 2003. During his tenure, the Whitney has presented dozens of criti critically acclaimed exhibitions, created award-winning educational programs, experienced exponential growth of its permanent co collection, and, and dramatically expanded its performance program. Under his leadership, the museum opened its new Renzo Piano Design Building here in Greenwich Village, where the institution was born almost 100 years ago, after spending a few decades at some obscure location north of 14th Street. He also realized, <laughs> he also realized Day's End, a permanent public sculpture by, uh, by artist David Hammonds on the Hudson River waterfront in 2021, and of course has just completed the renovation and opening of the former home and studio of the artist Roy Lichtenstein for the Whitney's renowned independent study program. Adam. Thank you so much, um, Andrew. Um, First of all, I just want a, um, a word um, of praise for village preservation. Um, Andrew and I have now known each other for well over a decade, and I know many of the members of the board who are here today. And, um, I, um, I just want to thank you for all the work that you do um, uh, to preserve um, the great architecture in the village. Uh, my grandparents lived there here virtually their whole lives. My mother grew up here. Um, it's a community that I've actually never had the good fortune of living in myself, except for the fact that I live in the Whitney Museum, which means I spend more time there than I do at home. But um, you all do wonderful work, and you find that right balance between the need for growth, the need for change, and at the same time, holding on to the fabric of our communities. And you're a very courageous person, Andrew, and I want to thank you um, because, you know, the Whitney Museum, the new building right over here, Renzo Piano, is not something you think of typical of this neighborhood, but Andrew understood that this was something that was consistent with the history in the, the neighborhood. And that's the, um, the point that I'd like to, you know, just start with before going specifically, is to say, this neighborhood was renowned as an artist community. There were artists all over this neighborhood um, and continues to be a fair number of artists, especially in this wonderful building, which is where I had my very first job working for the Guggenheim Museum in 1973, teaching classes in the West Beth building. And it's so wonderful to have the kind of um, uh, sync, uh, 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 connection between West Beth here and the next generation of artists who will be developed and grow in the independent study program, which actually had its first seminar just this afternoon in this building. And, you know, one of our dreams of the Whitney was to help to make sure that this neighborhood, it's great that there's businesses, it's great that there's restaurants, it's great that all these things, but the art, which has been so much a part of this neighborhood for over, well over 100 years, and we have specialists who know far more about it than I do, um, uh, that, the, that, that we could celebrate Roy tonight as one of the many artists living in this neighborhood and to celebrate Dorothy, um, and I have to say not only Dorothy, but her family who have made this dip, their sons, um, uh, and thank her for all of this. Um, this building, I think, as a number of you might have guessed, was a factory building. Some people, when they saw the flag fall, they thought firehouse or police station, and we were surmising maybe that went up during the First or Second World War during a, 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 a you know, during, um, during a period of nationalism. So it actually very finely, it was a metal, metal uh, work factory, and I suspect it was probably made here. I'm hoping that one of you historians will tell me more about that. But, 
This building also is, in a way, the story of the reuse of buildings by artists throughout New York City over generations. That's what's happened at Soho and also so true in Greenwich Village. And this is a magnificent building in and of itself in its, in its, hum in its humbleness. And what Dorothy and Rye did, and she'll hopefully tell you a little bit about it, I mean, it's, it was, the studio was on the ground floor and their home was above, and then we added a third floor with the wonderful architects Johnston Markway, who are based in LA and Cambridge. Um, we have Andrew Fu, who is here. Where are you, Andrew? I just want to thank you. He worked on this building. You can ask him questions about any of the architect design. It's, um, we're not opening it tonight. Um, because the worker, they're still putting um, finishing touches, but we are going to have some open house days, which will be announced, so that you'll all have a chance to see it. It's absolutely magnificent. But um, um, the home, what will be in the, is, is moving into, the, in, into this building in a couple of weeks is the Whitney Independent Study Program. It's a program that started in the, uh, at the Whitney in the 1960s, so it's over 50 years old, this program. It had five different locations all over uh, the downtown areas of New York. This is the first time we have a permanent home and a permanent home within walking distance of the museum, so that the synergy between the Whitney, built, Whitney Museum building and this, and now with the connection to West Beth and White Columns and all the other art, art activities here, it creates a kind of energy and a synergy. I'm so excited the David Hammond's project, which, which Andrew mentioned as well. And I just want to, um, most of all, um, uh, thank Dorothy. I would like to thank her family. I would like to thank the Lichtenstein Foundation. We have a few of the, um, we have the um, executive director, Jack Coward, who is here, the chairman of the board, um, Ruth Fine, who is here. I'm, I'm allowed to give everybody credit. Um, and, um, and, and we have Liz Glassman, who is a board member. I, didn't, I think there might be a couple of other board members, but I'm sure they'd be, they've spent a lot of time. This was used for the foundation after um, uh, uh, Roy's passing. So the, and uh, and um, we are just so thrilled to be in the magnificent, uh, this magnificent spa space. And um, this is also particularly meaningful for me because I retire from the Whitney in three days after 20 years as director, and this is my last public speech. So for me, this is a particularly fitting one because the art of the Whitney Museum, and I'll end with this, was a woman named Gertrude Vanderbilt Whitney. And we all know her as a wealthy woman uh, who was a great philanthropist. But what people sometimes forget was that she was an artist the Whitney Museum started in her studio in 1914 in Greenwich Village um, on McDougal Alley. It's still actually open by, um, to, uh, by appointment. That was the original home of the Whitney Museum, and it was in her studio that they had salons and discussions and conversations. And, and the idea that the Whitney Museum has always been the artist museum, the museum that supports artists at critical times in their career, it was a little known artist named Edward um, Hopper, um, who had his first show in, I think it was 1960, at the Whitney Studio. And ever since then, many, many artists of that generation became known. And the Whitney um, is developing and supporting and encouraging and providing a space for the next generations, the next generations of, 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 of Edward Hoppers and, um, uh, and the like to be able to um, uh, continue. So I think of this as the flame of the Whitney Museum still here in Greenwich Village. And um, there are many people here today who have been very supportive of this effort. Um, I can't name you all, but I just want to thank you. Um, Landmarks' um, uh, preservation was fantastic, but so many of you in this neighborhood who care deeply about art, care about Greenwich Village, and care about the Whitney Museum, and I'll forever be thankful of that. And it's my, now my great pleasure and honor to pass it back to Andrew. We'll pass it to George. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Adam. Again, just a, just a reminder if we can keep the sidewalk open as well as try to keep the, uh, the line from the, the camera open as well. So, um, so our next speaker, actually our final speaker before we do the unveiling, is Dorothy Lichtenstein, who is the president of the Roy Lichtenstein Foundation, which is dedicated to the encouragement of a broad understanding of the art of Roy Lichtenstein and the artists of his time, and was established after the artist's death in 1997. After studying art history at Arcadia University, Dorothy Lichtenstein became director of the pioneering Bianchini Art Gallery in New York, 
organizing exhibitions and projects dealing with emerging pop art. Dorothy has remained committed to art and culture as she serves on the board of Studio in a School and Studio Institute, the Trisha Brown Dance Company, and the Foundation for Art and Preservation in Embassies. Dorothy is a recipient of the Chevalier of Arts and Letters from the French government, and it is my uh, honor to pass the microphone over to her. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, as usual, uh, I don't have any speech papers here. Look, Bob, no hands. <laughs> um, but I thought I could just be impromptu. Uh, well, as has been said, Roy and I moved here in 1988. It was his dream studio. Uh, uh, he was so happy to have both the studio and we lived on the second floor, just accessible anytime he wanted to put another coat of paint on uh, or anything. Uh, when we got here in 1988, I guess the neighborhood was really poised for a lot of change. The High Line didn't exist, and that's been really a fantastic addition to the neighborhood. And of course, not least to mention Whitney Museum, uh, which moved in here, and I think in a, in a really beautiful way. Um, it just came into the neighborhood seamlessly, and I think it's very welcoming to the community. Uh, and a lot of that really has to do with Adams, Weinberg's warmth and sensitivities. Um, I'm looking around and I'm thinking, you've been my neighbors. And I don't know that I've actually met most of you. <laughs> That's right, yes, we met. Um, I, we're not leaving because we uh, still have the house uh, just south next to here. And so I'm happy to say that we'll be able to remain attached uh, to the neighborhood. And uh, I do think I'm pretty sure you will be invited to come in and see the itera new iteration of what was Roy's studio really turned into a place for future artists, historians, museum directors. Uh, there are amazing people who have already gone through this program. And it really means something to me to have um, the place that Roy worked, not just become a dead space like a museum or anything, but to have um, young people who are starting out interested in the arts to be able to come here. Uh, and uh, I, I'm just really thrilled with the idea. Uh, I'm so happy I get to see this in my lifetime, really, you know, to see accomplished and um, I know that the Whitney is a good neighbor and the independent studies program will continue to be a good neighbor and um, I, I'm just really grateful for the fact that the community accepted to do this and to make some slight uh, addition allow the museum to make an addition that will ha help this building really function in a better way. So, well, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Dorothy. So we're going to do the actual unveiling now, um, and I want to invite anybody from the Whitney or the Foundation or anyone else who's been involved with this to, to sort of come up here and join us for the sort of ceremonial pulling down of the covering of the plaque. And I also want to say we should have some information circulating about village preservation and our plaque program. Um, so if you're interested in getting more involved in the organization, if you're interested in um, attending future plaque unveilings, who here from Village Preservation has some of those stuff? All right, it's all here, so just uh, take one, pass it around, and uh, I'm gonna ask everybody to uh, extend, to sort of join me. And on the, actually, 
Dorothy and Adam, maybe you could pull from, pull from one corner as well on the count of three. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> okay. One, two, three. There we go. And uh, I'm going to read what it says. Well, of course, it first says Roy Lichtenstein. This was the New York City home and studio of artist Roy Lichtenstein from 1988 until his death in 1997. Lichtenstein's signature style of mimicking mass media subjects and printing processes became a foundation for early pop art and gar garnered him international fame. This former ironworks foundry's ample, naturally lit spaces were ideally suited for the artist's work and following his death housed both the estate and the Roy Lichtenstein Foundation offices. In 2022, the artist's wife, Dorothy Lichtenstein, and family gifted the building to the Whitney Museum of American Art. And this, this will hopefully be here forever to honor that, um, that incredible legacy of both what happened here before and what will hopefully be continue, continuing to happen here for a great deal of time to come. So here we are, and every, why don't we all uh, sort of gather around the, the, the plaque and get, have some pictures taken. Thank you.